In window 22 for Vectorworks 2017, we added the ability to create custom door leaves and this little movie is going to show you how to create this set of French doors within a window object. Now the advantage of, of doing it this way is that there's really an unlimited number of configurations for uh, you know, a, a set of French doors like this, uh, particularly in historic context and doing it this way allows you really the complete freedom to just design them as you want uh, rather than us trying to allow every little different configuration there might be. So step one is to get a window object as close as you can to the object here. So we've got overall door width 1400 and height of 2500. So you'll see here we've got uh, an overall width of 1480 which is the 1400 plus the 40 millimeter jam on either side and the height is 2500 which is a 2540 which is 2500 plus the 40 millimeter head uh, and the other thing that we're doing here is changing the default 35 millimeter door thickness to 40 millimeters because that's the thickness of these doors all right so with that in place i've created a um, a few little save views here to make navigation a bit easier. So we'll switch to a front view now and you can see here this is the window object um, so pretty ordinary looking doors there and we want to replace those with these. We'll begin by taking the rectangle tool and double clicking that and entering in the dimensions of one door leaf 700 by 2500. My next click will be in the top left corner position it next click, click OK and then I'm going to click up here to get that roughly in the right position. Uh, sticking with the rectangle tool let's now draw this here. Now obviously you would enter the, in the correct size there. Um, I'm not going to bother with that and let's do the one at the bottom as well. So something like that and I want these all aligned vertically so I'm going to press command or control equals and align center that'll just pull them all into alignment now another setting I have always turned on which is off by default is the uh, duplicate in place you'll see this in Vectorworks preferences um, in the edit tab allow option click uh, in place duplication or can control click sorry alt click that would be on Windows that means if I option or alt click on an object it will duplicate it and I've done that with that rectangle there and the duplicate I'm just going to drag up like that same with this bottom one drag this down uh, then we'll take the rectangle tool in vertex mode and draw this little mid rail in here or lock rail as it's sometimes called and next we want to create these styles, a rifle butt styles. So we'll take the inner boundary mode of the tool now and click inside here and click inside there. So that gets us the, the pieces for the frame. Um, I also want an extra duplicate and offset of these two rectangles here. So using the offset tool and set the distance to 15 millimeters and duplicate an offset I'll now select this rectangle then click inside it and I've offset that so it's 15 millimeters smaller all the way around same here select it and then offset it so I've now got most of the pieces I need we've got a couple of little glazing bars here so I guess we probably should draw those as well so it just got the height there let's say these are 20 millimeters and I'm only going to put one of these in but you can obviously put the other the reason I want to do this is to show that this is an asymmetrical door and you'll see how that works when we put it in the window object uh, what the hell why not, why not do the other ones as well uh, there's a few ways I could do this but yeah let's just take this
just nudge that down. And again, you can position these more accurately. Now, if you want all these to be merged into one object, you could do an add surface on them, which I'll do in a moment. So now we just need to, I'll be zoom in a bit. And what I want to do now is to clip this, use this rectangle to clip out the inside of this uh, slightly larger rectangle here. And you'll see it's it's difficult to select this now because I've, I've got the this one selected, but then I also want to select the one here, but it's choosing this. So we can do a right click here and we can go select coincident object and we'll get a list of all of the objects there that we want to select. That's the one I'm trying to select. Okay, so we click OK and that becomes selected. Now I can hold the shift key down, select this one and we can do our operation which is clip surface and doing this it's going to clip out this shape from the slightly larger one to give us that beading or trim around the outside. Let's do the same here and again I've got this problem trying to select this. I'll cheat this time and just come in from the, the side here and we've got those two selected now. We'll do the same modify clip surface and pretty well that's, uh, that's all the stuff we need. So let's now continue and start making some uh, of this into 3D. So I'll select all of the parts, the main parts of the door, which is five different uh, objects. We'll extrude that, model, extrude. So in future I'll just be extruding using this keyboard shortcut. And we're going to extrude this to 40 millimeters, which was our door thickness. Quite annoying when the connection to the mouse gets lost halfway through a movie. Uh, never mind. Let's soldier on. This here will be the glass, so we can extrude that, say, to 6 millimeters. This one here is going to be a, a, a panel, probably closer to 10 or 12 millimeters in thickness. So let's go 12. Then we've got again, we've got this selection problem here. Let's do these a bit easier. Now, if we wanted to add these together, we can go add surface and doing so will create this kind of joint so you won't see any lines in those joins. So let's extrude this to say uh, 25 millimeters and we've just got this pesky little thing here. Let's try this one first. Okay we've now got that polyline so extrude that to 25 as well. Let's do our polyline is what we want. Okay, extrude that to 25. Now this main outer rectangle we can now get rid of because we don't need it anymore. And everything has kind of disappeared now. But what we can do is to actually delete that PDF from there and we can now see all the bits and pieces to our window. So we need to go to a top view now and look at this. Let's select it first because so here it is down here. So now I'm going to do a fit to objects and zoom in closely so we can see all of these bits and pieces here. So we're just going to do an align again now using command or control equals and this time we want to align in this plane to the center and that's kind of put everything the way we want it. Let's go to a right ISO view now and just have a look at this. Do a fit to objects. So it kind of looks uh, how I expect. Now 
Because this is going into a window or object and you may be wanting to use classes to control attributes, we want to put all these different bits and pieces into the correct classes. So the really everything except the glass will go into the um, the frame class. So we can select all of that and then hold the shift key down and deselect that. And let's put this into the WD doors class. And you'll see what immediately happened here is that all of those things got the class attributes which included a texture. And same for the glass, let's put that in the WD glass class and the glass just became transparent. So this is our slightly asymmetrical unit. So what we need to do now is to convert it into a symbol. So we select it and we go modify create symbol. Now when you're using uh, symbols uh, in Windor you have to start it with WD hyphen and then you can call it whatever you like. So let's just call this um, door leaf one. Plan projection center uh, is fine. In fact that's what you need. Click OK and we have our object here. Alright, so going back to say a front view how do we get this into the window object? So we select the window object, we go to settings, and then under custom symbols, use symbol geometry, replace all door leaves with symbol one, in other words, a symbol listed here, create 2D door and sash geometry for us as well. So let's choose our symbol here. This is the one we just created. Let's go ahead and click OK. And you'll see now that this has been inserted into the window object. Now there's a slight mismatch here and I think that's because the symbol is possibly not quite at zero. So here's our symbol instance here. If we edit this, edit. 3D component. Um, yeah, see that little thing there represents let's have a look at this. I didn't, that represents zero, so we're just going to pull this down and she it looks like it's 20, so I'm going to move 3D minus 20, these little annoying things. Okay, exit symbol. All right, that looks better. Let's look at our right ISO now, and you'll see we've got our doors in there. So if I render them in OpenGL, they'll come in like this. So you'll see here if we go, say, open in 3D, um, the doors are going to open. And you'll notice that the, the second door was flipped to um, this asymmetrical uh, glazing bars here. So it, it will flip the second one. It won't just do a duplicate of it. So when the doors are asymmetrical, the uh, window will take care of that. And the other stuff will still just work. So, for example, if you wanted to put uh, a, you know, door hardware on here, um, you know, that's going to work as well. Um, it's it's only the, the the symbol that has replaced this geometry. Now we made these doors precisely the right size for the dimensions we'd nominated in the window object, but you can um, vary these dimensions and Windor will stretch the doors accordingly. 
Uh, I'm just going to turn that hardware off. Sorry, not the hardware. So if I set this to, say, 1580, you'll see that Windor actually stretched those symbols a little bit. So, you know, if, if, this, if it's more of an impression that you're trying to give, um, then, you know, you don't have to be absolutely precise with the, with the dimensions. So I could make that, say, 1300. That'll squash it all up a bit. Obviously, if you do that too much, then, you know, things like the glazing bars are going to read as being incorrect. But, you know, within reason, you can, you can make slight changes to it and, and for all intents and purposes, it's still going to look reasonably well uh, or reasonably accurate. And of course, uh, if we do a hidden line rendering, um, yeah, you will see, you know, all of these lines. And of course, if you didn't want all of those components to be separate, then back in the symbol, if we edit this symbol again, edit the 3D component, and we were to select all of these, we can add these together to make them into a single object. So um, when you extrude a group of objects together, it comes out as a single extrude. But if you then ungroup it, you'll get the five separate extrudes. Um, and at this point in time, nothing has changed, essentially. But what I can do now, because I've got five separate extrudes, is to go to Model, Add Solids. And you'll notice all those lines just disappeared, all the junction lines disappeared. So if that is the look that you want, then obviously you can do that. Or you can leave them separately if you want those, uh, the lines to appear.